Today, I'm going to show you how to vectorize your AI art using Adobe Illustrator. So I've got a graphic opened up right here from DAL E3. This is a simple JPEG image, very pixelated. As you can see, it's about a thousand pixels wide and high. And what we need to do in order to vectorize this is go to window and open up the image trace panel. And then you want to click on the image that you want to vectorize. And then we can click trace in this panel and it is going to turn it into a black and white graphic, which is not useful for POD, but that's just because the preset is um, the default right here. And that's not a very good one for us. A quick overview of these different presets. The ones at the bottom are not really ideal for print and demand either. The shades of gray looks quite cool, but besides that, we've got, you know, black and white logos, sketched art. This might be useful if, if you're creating logo designs or very simplistic stuff, maybe some silhouettes. But in our case, if we have colors in the graphic, these settings are not great. At the top, we've got high fidelity and low fidelity photo. Those are good if you actually have photographs that you want to vectorize because this tries to pick up as much detail as possible and lots and lots of colors. As you can see, we've got lots of different purples and it, it almost makes our graphic look pixelated because that's what it's trying to imitate, the original pixelated image. So those settings are not great either for print and demand. However, Three colors, six colors, and 16 colors are the presets that you can actually utilize quite well and that I usually start off with. So three colors is definitely too little looking at this design. So let's try six colors, see what that comes back with. And it's going to refresh. And we've got a lot of blue in this cat, which doesn't work well. So we do need a few more colors. Let's go to 16 instead, let it refresh. And yeah, that already looks a lot better. If you're not happy, you can still use this slider right here to increase the number of colors that you've got. So in my case, I think it, it does look better uh, adding a few more colors in. You can also turn it down a bit and have less colors. Just mess around with your graphic. You might have a, a different setting that works better for you. I think in my case, going slightly above 20 might be a good idea. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with this. And now the next step would be heading into the advanced settings. And with these, it's quite handy to actually hover over these sliders because then Illustrator will tell you what the settings do and how to use them. For example, the path fitting means the higher the value, the tighter the fit. And in order to test it out, what I would recommend is setting it to the extremes. So let's turn it up to very high and see what changes in our graphic. So in this case, it's got very rough around the edges. If I turn it down to the lowest setting, it should get very, very smooth as we can see right there. But if we zoom out, it has also lost some of its detail. If we turn it up very high again, then you can see it looks a bit more accurate. So these are just the extremes to show you the, the difference of how these sliders work. In your case, most of the time you're going to have to find a a balanced setting somewhere in the middle. So maybe slightly towards a high setting, or if you think that still looks too rough, then you might want to go further down to towards a lower setting, um, like in my case. Next up, what we can do is the corners. So higher value means more corners. Let me show you an example for this. If we zoom in to this edge right here, let's actually turn this up very high to get a lot of corners or sort of sharp edges. As you can see, it's turned this into a sharp edge on both ends. And if we turn this down all the way to the bottom, it should make it very, very rounded off and smooth, which I think for printed amount often works better to have a very smooth result. But again, you have to be careful. You don't want to turn it down too much because some of the shapes will start looking weird. So corners, going to probably turn that down to about 30% for this graphic. And now the noise setting, this is pretty important. So noise means higher value, less noise. And an example of noise would be that we've got a bit of a jagged edge right here, this sort of black um, thing. Also over here, we've got quite a bit of noise with these different colors going on, um, looks a bit strange. So Let's start off with this section and show you that if we turn the noise slider up, then we get less noise. So if we turn this to the top, some of this should disappear. Yes, there we go. It looks a bit tidier. And what's happened over here, this edge has also become a lot smoother. So turn it back down, the noise setting, you're going to get a jagged, sort of messy edge. Turn it up to the top, it should go very smooth. So as you can see, that's a very important setting and one worth messing around with, but also zoom out as well and take a look at the full picture and what difference these settings make. Because sometimes when you zoom in, you lose some details. Like, look, if I turn the noise very high, 
the eyes are going to get very different and some of the detail in the bowl gets lost which you might want to retain so you don't actually want to have the noise turned up all the way to the top just to make it as smooth as possible because it is going to lose some of the detail that you might want to keep and then we get simplify what this means is you can affect the number of anchor points that your graphic has which can also help you tidy things up and make it easier to edit afterwards so if we have this at 100 percent then it's just the default set of anchor points. And the lower we turn this, the less anchor points we have. So if I turn it all the way to the bottom, it's probably going to look very weird because yeah, it is going to try and remove as many anchor points as possible and that just messes things up. But if you're making like very, very simplistic graphics or maybe logos, then turning down the simplify feature right here to a very low value could definitely be very useful. In our case with print and demand graphics, I would say stick to the AT like 90% uh, bracket. You don't want to go too low with the simplify feature, but turning it down a bit can definitely help and make some of these lines a bit smoother and better. Now, one more important feature of this image trace is the ability to actually ignore a certain color. So in this case, you probably notice we've got this beige background and we want to get rid of it. So we can click ignore color over here. And by default, it ignores white which is not very helpful for us so what we can do is we can click on the color picker right here and then just sample any color from our image and then it should ignore that color there we go very very handy it's erased the background for us in a sense you can drag it off and see right here it works very well so yeah that's it in terms of how these settings work you definitely have to play around with them try out different settings and see what works best for your graphic i hope this gave you a better understanding of how to use this image trace feature how does it compare to other options that you've got out there i think vectorizer ai is still a lot better but it has become a paid tool which is a bit annoying oh man so if you do have vectorizer you could try the image trace feature where vectorizer performs a lot better is things like this right here like the cheeks sort of blushing is bleeding into the eye which doesn't look great at all and yeah image uh, vectorizer i'll show you in a second right here vectorizer solves that a lot better and a lot easier one last step that you have to go through is go over to object image trace and expand and now it's going to turn this into an actual vector so you could actually use the direct selection tool and make some edits to this now so always remember to expand this and then you can further edit this make adjustments to the paths um, and you've got a true vector format then and here's the quick example of what vectorizer ai would look like if we zoom into the eye i think this looks a lot smoother than our illustrator result and i didn't really have to fiddle with any of the settings much so yeah vectorizer ai is still superior but quite expensive now coming in at like ten dollars a month um so it's still worth paying for it if you want the best results but um, there is some alternatives including adobe illustrator it's just a shame that you know it doesn't really live up to the same results even though adobe is quite an advanced tool um, the image tracer is not the best in my opinion but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below what you think of the adobe image trace feature and if you're still looking for a vectorizer ai alternative that's free and gets you some decent results then make sure to check out this video next because i did find a really good alternative that has a lot of settings and features that can help you out massively.